of these uh, old pieces of, uh, of uh, uh, subcase weaponry, subcase launch vehicles for satellites, things of this sort. Uh, they publish a, uh, a very lovely little newsletter that talks about how, uh, oh, and a piece of an American space capsule from uh, 20 years ago rear-ended uh, a shot Chinese um, uh, uh, launch vehicle uh, the, uh, and produced a few more debris. It's a catastrophe. Uh, but instead, we've got, there's no other word for it, an arrogant, almost Roman, out of control Air Force that continues to uh, serve the interests of the military industrial complex, the space lobby to uh, build things that they know won't work. What is a that space, is say, I mean, what is a space I mean, Pearl Harbor? A space Pearl Harbor would mean, they believe, uh, what the Chinese did uh, in January when they tested an anti-satellite weapon against one of their old and redundant satellites. Satellites do burn out. There's no way to repair them. Uh, so they simply shot it, down, shot it down with a uh, with a rocket. This explosion produces massive amounts of, uh, of debris in whizzing around the Earth uh, in low Earth orbit. Uh, if you went into high Earth orbit, you would start killing off the main uh, satellites on which, uh, well, probably this television broadcast is going to depend on, too. Uh, the, uh, uh, and, and there's no way to, to ever get rid of, of things that are orbiting in high Earth orbit. Low Earth orbit, some of them will descend into the atmosphere and burn up. Uh, but uh, the, uh, the Air Force has continuously used this so-called threat of, uh, of our being blinded by, uh, because we have become so reliant on uh, global positioning systems. Our so-called smart bombs depend on them. Uh, that we've, uh, They're not very smart, and it's not as good a global positioning system as the peaceful one the Europeans are building called Galileo. Uh, but it's, uh, that's what they, they use it to say, we must arm space, we must have anti-satellite weapons in space. We have rebuffed every effort to control this, and finally now, the Chinese have called our bluff. Where does, uh, where does Fort Greeley, Alaska fit into this, the silos? Well, Fort, Fort, that is, there's three ways to shoot down an alleged incoming missile. This is the whole farce of whether there is a defense against a missile. I guarantee you there is no defense at all against the Toprol M, uh, the, uh, the Russian missile that uh, goes into orbit extremely rapidly, uh, goes into, uh, into its uh, arch extremely rapidly. Uh, that uh, has a uh, maneuvering ability that means that it's undetectable. We're basically looking at very lowbrow weapons that would be coming from a country like North Korea, in which we uh, we have three different ways of trying to intercept them. Uh, we used to only try to do with one under the Clinton administration, under the enthusiasts of the current neoconservatives. We have three ways. One on uh, uh, on blast off, this is extremely difficult to do, but we're trying to create a laser carried in a Boeing 747 that would hit one. You've got to be virtually on top of the launch site in order to do so. It's never worked. Uh, it probably doesn't work. At the only, it's just expensive. The much more common one would be to down the hostile missile while it is in outer space. Uh, from having given up its, its launch vehicle and is now heading at uh, very high speed toward the United States. Uh, this is what the interceptors that have been put in the ground at Fort Greeley, Alaska, and uh, a couple of them at Vandenberg Air Force Base in California are supposed to do. They have never once yet had a successful intercept. The radar is not there to actually track the uh, the allegedly, allegedly hostile uh, vehicle uh, the, that, as one senior Pentagon uh, uh, scientist said the other day, uh, these are really essentially scarecrows, uh, hoping that uh, they would scare off uh, the North Koreans. This is a, a catastrophic misuse of resources against a small and failed communist state, uh, North Korea. There is no easier thing on earth to detect than a hostile missile launch. 
Uh, and the proper approach to preventing that is deterrence. It is, we have thought about it, worked on it, practiced it, studied it now for decades. The North Koreans have an excellent reputation for rationality. They know if they did launch such a vehicle at Japan or at the United States, they would disappear the next day in a retaliatory strike, and they don't do it. It's why, in the case of Iran, it's the only logical thing to do is to learn to live with a nuclear-armed Iran. It's inevitable for a country now surrounded by nuclear powers. The United States in the Persian Gulf, uh, the Soviet Union, Israel, uh, uh, Pakistan, and India, uh, the uh, the Iranians are rationalists and recognize the only way you're ever going to dissuade people from using their nuclear power to intimidate us is a threat of retaliation. So we are developing our uh, minimal uh, deterrent, uh, and we should learn to live with it. Finally, Chalmers Johnson, you have just completed your trilogy. Uh, your first yes. book, Blowback, uh, then Sorrows of Empire, and now finally Nemesis, The Last Days of the American Republic. What is your prediction? Well, I don't see any way out of it. I think it's gone too far. I think we are domestically uh, too dependent on the military-industrial complex that uh, Every I mean, it's perfectly logical for any Secretary of Defense to try and close military bases that are redundant, that are useless, that are worn out, that to go back to the Civil War. Uh, Any time he tries to do it, you produce an uproar in the surrounding community from newspapers, television, priests, uh, local politicians, save our base. The two uh, mother hens of the Defense Facility Subcommittee of the Senate Armed Services Committee the people committed to uh, taking care of our bases are easily Kay Bailey Hutchinson of Texas and Diane Feinstein of California, the two states with the largest number of military bases, and those two senators would do anything in their power to uh, keep them open. Uh, it's, uh, this is the insidious way in which the military-industrial complex has penetrated into our democracy. and.